The will-o'-the-wisp grace of the feather was used to adorn the hair of women in the reign of the first Elizabeth. Today, they are specially imported from China for a similar vogue, feather hats. Dyed coquille feathers from the jungle cock and mallard duck are stuck with a special adhesive, each one overlapping onto a felt base. But it's not as easy as it looks. It takes 10 years to be fully experienced. The range of 45 fast colors can only be obtained by artificial dyes, but the bird-like natural covering of the hat makes it waterproof. The rainbow-hued effect of the hackle feathers from the neck of the same birds is obtained by each being separately dyed in three colors. 2,000 of these feathers will have been used on the finished hat. All these feathers would seem to belie Oscar Wilde's remark that good hats are made out of nothing. Or do they? On the other hand, nobody could miss the handsome plumes of the ostrich, practically the only bird bred exclusively for the decorative value of its plumes. These sharp scissors recall an ancient Hungarian custom connected with feathered hats. The number of feathers depicted the number of Turks the owner had killed. Model Pamela Fawcett makes a pretty picture in a Chinese hackle Ottoman beret, a fine example of design and craft work. Following in the same oriental theme is the coolie. like these are boosting our export trade, particularly to the United States, so this cap is suitably named Forward. In this way, nature's contribution has put Britain in the forefront of